they're also going to keep the armor, um, so, uh, they, you know, going to find out about the armor and stuff that they were holding, that they were wearing. And then Stevens asks, uh, the unconscious Rick, what has that monster done to you? So, apparently, he's actually a sane person in the community. He actually knows that this is completely freaking wrong. Glenn is uh, in this garage. He's by himself. He's very, very scared and upset. He doesn't know what's going to happen. Uh, the survivors from that helicopter are being ripped apart by zombies. Some nice, you know, scenes of gore and flesh-eating stuff. So that's that's nice. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Get out of my face. Um, the governor... Uh, opens up the door. They've tied Michonne, uh down, basically. And uh, I'm just going to say, he's going to torture her very badly. I'm just going to say that. So, Rick uh, wakes up very slowly. He sits up like, oh, what's going on, man? He looks, he turns, and he's missing a hand. Great. Great. You see, that's the kind of thing that I love about The Walking Dead. You see, Rick is our main character, our protagonist. Usually in books and movies, the main character never really gets hurt permanently. You know, something like getting their freaking hand cut off. So, stuff like that just doesn't happen. You don't see it happening. Well, and not in Robert Kirkman's world. In Robert Kirkman's world, anything will happen. Anything. So, I mean, jeez. So Rick tries to stand up. He's very woozy and stuff. He's looking around, and hey, here comes... Uh, this uh, chick, uh, who's this chick? And she's like, oh my god, Dr. Stevens, oh, the patient is down. And then uh, her name is Alice, because Stevens uh, asks, well, what, Alice? So apparently uh, uh, Alice is the uh, nurse or something, uh, the assistant. So, okay. So they raise him up, and immediately Rick flips out and attacks him like, who are you? I'll kill you. I'll friggin'. <laughs> Alice uh, gives him a sedative, and uh, Rick is back to unconscious land. Governor has finished uh, torturing Bashan. He's going to come back for round two. Still not going to say, but uh, he's going to torture her even more. It's very sad. She's very, very, very beat up. You know what? I'm just going to show you. She's very, very beat up. So it's not good. Not good at all. The governor is a very bad, bad person. So the governor's walking around, he's talking with the citizens and stuff, and they ask, so there better be a good fight today or um, tomorrow or something, and he's like, yeah, there definitely will be. So he's acting like a nice person to everyone else, but that's the key. That's the key to being a psychotic person. If uh, you recall back in Volume 3, Thomas, he seemed like a nice person, but then he chopped off two little girls' heads. So yeah, can't trust anyone in this world. He walks into what looks like his apartment, and hello... Some little zombie girl pops out and attacks him. He just smacks that bee across the face and says, Calm yourself down. Plus, he curses a lot. He points out, why are, you, why are you attacking me? I mean, you haven't attacked me in, like, months. He turns around and, oh, no food in the bucket. So, apparently, this girl was his daughter at one point. She's a zombie, of course, now. He's been feeding her some, uh, you know, human limbs. So, that's just sick. Uh, he sits down trying to get some sleep, and then his second-in-command guy comes up and says, Here, this is what you wanted from the helicopter crash. Ah, thank you. He looks over there, and there are heads in the box. There are heads. Puts the heads, and hello. Sits in this room where he's got all these uh, canisters holding zombie heads. Like, like dozens of them. What the fuck is this person? This guy's crazy. The governor is crazy. Um, he was given the name, the governor, by the community, by the way. So Glenn is very upset, and uh, governor is basically pointing out, I'm, a, I'm going to uh, ask you some questions, and you're going to answer me, all right? I'm going to go torture the chick right next door, Michonne, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to torture you with audio. So then uh, he goes in, he tortures Michonne even more. Glenn can't stand the torture because he's right next door and he's hearing it. It's really freaking Glenn up. He's really, really just losing it. And, uh, so they're basically just going to ask him questions and he'll have no choice but to answer where, uh, Rick came from. Rick finally wakes up and is like, uh, okay, I'm more sane now. I'm not going to attack you. Stevens points out, all right, you know what? We, me and Alice are like the only sane people here. We know that the governor, which his actual name is Philip, uh, we're just going to call him the governor. 
The governor is a very bad person. He used to be a good person. He kept everyone safe, but then he kind of went a little crazy, and now he has control over the whole community. He's very bad, very powerful. We can't do anything about it. Sorry about that. So then Rick points out, well, I hate him, and, and then the Stevens and Alice say, well, we hate him too. And then the governor comes in and says, hey, what's up, everybody? Yeah, you gonna fix up my frickin' bandage? How's it going, want? How's it going, lefty? So then... Rick points out, so are you going to torture me? And then he says, nah, nah, you're not going to get tortured. I'm torturing everyone else, but I'm not going to torture you. I knew that you wanted to say crap about where uh, you guys came from. So I tortured everyone else, and I asked the, your little fella Glenn where you guys came from. So then uh, he says, well, he, he's not going to tell you anything. And then uh, Glenn, or um, the governor points out, well, actually, he did. And we let him go. So he says, wait a second, you let him go? Yep. We know everything about where you guys came from, the prison. So we let him loose. I'm guessing he'll just run right back to the uh, police or the prison. And we'll just follow him and find out where you guys came from and frick you up. And crap. And then we get a nice little angle. And uh, here's Glenn in his armored suit running out into uh, the open, running for his life, trying to get back to the uh, prison. Crap. This is not going good. So Glenn keeps on running, he uh, finds the car, he gets in, it won't start. Ah, oh, frick, dang it. Um, he's still continuing on. Back at the prison, uh, Andrea is sniping, she's sniping zombies and stuff. Dale is still very worried about the people, and, uh, you know, they're chatting it up. Billy's talking with Otis, and, uh, you know, they're just kind of getting along, I guess. Billy is upset because he doesn't have a chick to have fun with, because everyone else is pairing off. Um... Uh, Lori is still very upset. She's very worried because they've been gone for two days. She's very angry at Carol every time Carol tries to make a move. Um, and then Carol points out, that's not what I meant, and Lori leaves. They're in the generator room, Herschel and Axel. They're getting gas um, uh, to put in the RV. They're asking, yeah, we might be able to watch a movie sometime. I mean, that'd be pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Everyone's basically just very worried about the uh, three heroes that left. Patricia's very upset. She's, you know, she's the person that no one likes right now. Otis is apologizing to her and says, you know what, you want to be friends? And she's like, fine, whatever. Um, Lori is still very upset. She's missing Rick terribly because he's been gone longer than he usually is. Uh, hmm. And, uh, yeah. So Andrea is still sniping zombies and stuff. She's pointing out, well, you need a watcher, you know, someone up here just in case we get attacked. Attacked by who? You know, other people other than zombies. I mean, we might get attacked by, you know, regular humans. They look out and hello, they see Glenn running out into, uh, they see Glenn running in the field. Um, and uh, he's right at the prison. So then they say, holy crap, he's back. Come on, let's get him. So then they get him and stuff, and um, they help him get inside. They drive out the RV, knock over the zombies, tell him to get in. He gets in. They drive him back into the prison. They get him down. Dude, are you okay? And he takes off the helmet, and wait a second. That, that's not Glenn. That's Tyrese. What the heck? Wait, what? I'm confused. Tyrese apparently ran out um, to find out where they went. He couldn't find them. So he's saying, I'm not going to believe they're dead until I find their bodies. We're going to find them eventually. Come on, let's uh, stop the zombies from getting into the gates. Uh, so they have to shut down the gates. Back to uh, uh, Woodbury. Apparently, uh, they closed the door and uh, the governor points out, uh, yeah, totally worked. You see the look on that guy's face? We know it's a prison. We know that there is a uh, prison somewhere. We didn't actually release Glenn. They lied to Rick to get a reaction out of him. And, uh, yeah, somehow they knew about the prison. I'm not really sure how. But, yeah. So, Glenn is still there. And, basically, it's just a matter of time before they find that prison and frick everybody up. Kill everybody. So, that's not good. And that's the end of volume number five, The Best Defense. Something I just want to point out. It's kind of funny. Um, oh, Rick. 
Um, remember back in Volume 3 when he beat the snot out of Thomas, and in Volume 4 when they kept on pointing out that his hand would never really heal? That was his right hand. Well, he just got it cut off in this volume, so it didn't matter anyway. He wasn't going to be able to use it. But, yeah, a little joke there. Yeah, that's it for now. Pretty pretty bad volume, yeah. Intense. He just lost a hand. That, that sucks. But, yeah, that's uh, one of the three most shocking moments in the Walking Dead series. And, yeah, we'll be back with the sixth one soon. See you guys later. Bye.